Hello, family. It's Ariana, your Tarot Life Coach, bringing you your December 2022 Tarot Scope, sweet baby. Big, big hugs, lots and lots of love, high fives, and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. If you're new to my channel, the way these reads are going to go is we're going to talk a little bit of astrology. Then we break it down into a oracle read for the elements, and then it breaks down into your sign. So they will all be time stamped in the description. You can click on the part that you want to hear. Another thing that I usually get from people is, man, that reading made no sense to me and then they come back at the end of the month they're like oh my gosh I should have paid attention so save it and go back and listen to it again all right so thank you for joining me um let's talk about what's going on astrologically so December 3rd Neptune goes direct in Pisces 22 degrees let's talk about what 22 signifies 22 is a master builder number comes down to the number four we are building a foundation and Neptune has been retrograde since June 23rd, 2022. So this is like we are starting to have more um, compassion for the collective. OK, this is also pay attention to your dreams. This is about you really building on your dreams. Keep a dream journal because they might be meaning something more to you as we go into 2023. December 6th, Mercury enters into Capricorn. Communication will become more grounded and clear and about what we want to accomplish. All right. Now, December 7th, full moon in Gemini, 16 degrees. 16 comes to a 7. 7 is a message from the collective. This is known as the cold moon. The cold moon is a Mohawk name that conveys the frigid conditions of the time of the year. Well, we're going to get to the really nitty gritty of the coldness, okay, when it takes a hold of us. Others' names include when the deer sheds its antlers by the Dakota and the little spirit moon by the Anishabi. Now, if I mispronounce any words, please forgive me, okay? Gemini rules the mind, short-term planning and traveling, also short-term education. It's time to focus on your goals, okay? What do you need to release in order to move forward? Remember, communication is key communication between your thoughts and the universe so keep it clear all right december 9th venus enters into capricorn the desire to approach relationships becomes much more mature we're looking at the long haul we're looking at the bigger picture here now december 18th series enters into libra series describes what we need to feel nurtured how we want to nurture those around us and series is associated with the greek goddess demeter who nearly lost her daughter per persephone to hades known as pluto the underworld okay Okay, he kidnapped her and then <sighs> Demeter like stopped vegetation and all these things happened until she was returned for eight months out of the year. Libra and Ceres wants you to pay attention to the things of beauty around you. Pay attention to what's missing. All right. And create it. Now, on the 20th. We have um, Jupiter entering, re-enters into Aries, and it's going to go until May 16th, 2023. Aries is a very eager cardinal sign, okay? It wants to make things happen. Jupiter and Aries is going to have you all fired up and excited, maybe even taking on more than you can. So make sure not to take on more than you can, all right? Now, December 21st, we have the Sun squared Jupiter. Be aware of not over-promising, all right? <laughs> this makes me think like when you're doing like your plans for next year, don't bite off more than you can chew, okay? The moment in this time, it's the winter solstice. It's the shortest day of the year and the sun enters into Capricorn and the moon is in Cancer. The moon rules our emotions, okay? So Cancer is going to help you focus more on your home and what you kind of want around there while Capricorn is stabilizing those decisions to make them full forward, okay? Now, on the 23rd, Chiron goes direct 11 degrees. 11, another master number, which comes down to a 2. It's time for decisions, okay? And it being an Aries, and it's been retrograde since July 19th. So, look at the things that have been revealed to you about the areas in your healing path. Chiron is the wounded healer who could not heal himself. So, what did you learn over the last six months? How can you how can you manifest that into the mighty I am to um, move you to the next level? All right. Now, on the 23rd, we have the new moon in Capricorn. Capricorn is a wonderful sign to set these new moon intentions, goals, new directions and new paths. It's time to start over. All right. And on the 29th. We have Mercury retrograde in Capricorn. And yes, we start off 2023 with a beautiful Mercury retrograde, okay? This has been an off and on again kind of influence through 2022, okay? And it's all about taking our ideas because Mercury is ruled by air. It's our thoughts and our words and grounding them into something more stable, okay? 
So you might have put things off last year. There are some ideas that you might have had. You're going to go back and revisit those and establish them on a more on a better foundation. Now, December 31st, if you celebrated, Happy New Year. And I want to say to you guys, thank you for spending the last six years with me and my family. I truly love and appreciate each and every one of you. I apologize for the sniffling and sneezing. I have bronchitis again. So... I'm on my last day of meds, but it's been a rough one. I'll be honest with you. This weather has really had me underneath, so thank you for um, giving me grace this time with all the sniffling, sneezing, and probably pausing for coughing, all right? So, if you're interested in a reading, the only way to get a reading by me is not through the DMs, guys. Go to my link tree. Hit that link tree. There's going to be some new offers coming in for the end of the year, starting off 2023. And if you guys would like some 2023 videos, let me know and we'll start shooting them now. So with that being said, let's jump into the reads. Hello Capricorns, Taurus, and Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus if you're listening for love. And special shout out to my very special Capricorns who may be celebrating a birthday in December or January. Hey sister, I love you so much. Marlo, happy birthday. Manny, happy birthday. And Ola Pola, happy birthday. Now, with that energy, let's jump into your Oracle read. So, where do we want to start? Let's start with the Hawk. The hawk energy has something very special for you because the hawk comes out in two of your cards, okay? So here's the hawk, and this is about having a bird's eye view of what's in front of you, knowing when to go down and grab what's yours and fly to the highest level. So a little story about the hawk. I'm going to tell you all a story of how I started reading cards. Anyways, I, um, I was out for a run one day because I used to like running a lot. And I was in the middle of East Texas, Palestine, Texas, to be honest. And it's like super cold outside. It's um, probably February or March. And um, I was mad because my earphones wouldn't play. And all of a sudden, I see this huge white hawk land on the railing on the side of the track. I thought I was going to die. And it stared at me, and I stared at it. And it felt like forever, but then it left. And it made me research what does the white hawk mean, and it was like a symbol of shamanism. And so I started studying animals and trying to understand that. The next day I went back to run, and that's when I saw the vultures. And so that's why I always have a very strong affinity to birds. I, I believe birds are very important things. This is a messenger from the gods coming to you. And I do believe that it's important for you to start heeding the messages that are coming your way. It's, it's not in order to change your mind, but it's to offer clarity on what's to happen ahead. Now, which leads us to the two of roses. And I do believe the number two is very important for you because I have the second house showing up for you too. And here's the beautiful hawk. And here's the beautiful hawk. And then here's the angel message. So I believe that there is an important conversation that you're going to be having with someone. The tea is about to be spilled. Information is coming to the horizon, but your angels got you. And I believe that if you trust the universe, what the hawk is telling you is what you're seeing is true. And you need to make you need to take action on this decision. And it doesn't matter whose feathers you ruffle. Go for what makes you happy. Because that leads us to the butterfly cards. Y'all know I'll be, I'll be struggling with these butterfly cards. I don't ever know what they're going to say. But it says, be true to you. And I feel like in this conversation that you're going to be having, it's important for you to stand up for yourself and really speak your mind. I feel for a long time, our sign, you've kind of been putting those things to the side. You haven't really been focusing on yourself. I believe the color pink is going to be very important for you because she's landing on a pink flower and you have that of rose quartz coming in so this stone is linked to our heart chakra on ahata and it works with all hearts related to all matters related to love and healing the heart by learning to love ourselves and healing past wounds we become able to love others and receive love in return rose quartz replaces negative energies with love and releases emotions and in pain um, it's to strengthen the heart, the chest, and the lungs by working with the thymus gland. Rose quartz strengthens the immune system and releases impurities from the body. Now, on a spiritual level, it signifies that love will soon enter your life as a romantic gift or in the way that will help you heal from the past wounds in your heart. Now, in order to connect more to your heart chakra this month, you can always listen to Reiki music or megahertz that are, is intended for the heart chakra. You can carry rose quartz. You can light pink candles, you can wear pink, uh, you can wear green, and that's going to harbor in that energy coming in for you. Your ancestors want you to speak up for yourself. This is about expression. It's about letting your story be heard, letting your part of the story be heard. You know, maybe uh, the other person is always talking over you or the situation doesn't give you a chance to clarify things, but this is your chance to speak up for yourself. 
And the planet that wants to work with you is no other than the beautiful Venus in the second house. So Venus in your money and in your love. So cherish your beliefs. Enjoy what you value. And you're going to have enough resources in order to move forward. Because some of y'all are wondering, am I going to be enough? Is this going to be enough? And you're going to be more than enough. All right. We are going to be using, what is this, the Muse Tarot? I want you to think of uh, two questions in your head, and I'm going to give you two yeses or nos. I'm going to apologize to you guys immediately. I have the sniffles. may have to pause periodically through the video because um, I start coughing really bad. I'm on my last day of bronchitis medicine, but <sighs> it's a journey. All right? It's a journey. So let's see what the overall energy is. It is the sun. So I feel like you've been wanting to put your story out there, put yourself out there, really focusing on your health too. And I do believe that it is time, okay? Now, let's see. For question number one, I get a very strong yes. You got the magician. You got everything you need to make this happen. You're also very clear on your manifestations and how you want this to go down, all right? For card number two, I'm going to get a no. This is not a good thing for you. I get the three of voices. This is about heartache, heartbreak, and really being in our own head right now. So this is not a good time for that decision or choice that you are going to be making. So where do the cards go? I hate when I do that. I have so many cards on the table, y'all. I'm like, where do those cards go? What happened to them? Let's use the Babylonian tarot and let's tap into our energies today. Just a little prayer. I know I put my dice up here. Y'all, this dice and me have been fighting all day. Like, it does not want to stay in this place. There we go. I'm going to move those cards to the side. Not ready yet. There we go. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Lots of arrows. Lots of communication. Lots of being in our head right now. Overall energy, it's the wheel. It's time to get up, get out, and do something, baby. All right, let's see what we got going on here. <sighs> At the bottom of the deck, this could be something that's already happened, is happening, is going to happen, all right? <coughs> <clears throat> So we have the Queen of Wands here. This is you really taking control. This is Aya. This is the energy of making things happen. This is that fiery, creative energy coming through. You're going to start fresh. You're going to start new. You're going to go for it, right? You're going to start meeting people that want to participate, collaborate, pour into you just like you pour into them. And you're going to accept that Ace of Cups. Some of y'all may be meeting a water sign or having a water sign that's going to be very um, influential in the way that you move forward in the next few months. Then we have here the Princess of Arrows. Communication is going to be key for you, especially around the full moon in Sagittarius. I want you to keep that in mind as you're trying to release the things that are keeping you from where you want to be. This energy is also about you having clarity on how you want to move forward. And it goes into the sign of Libra. And so this is the justice card. You want things to be fair before you move on. And the thing is, not fair for others, but fair to yourself. Because you have always been putting people first before you. And I know that sounds very rude. It's like, oh, well, F everyone else. No, but this is about you making a decision that's going to move you to the next level. Because it's important for you to move on. And I feel that you're moving on and you're in a healthy way. Okay, like it's not like you're kicking trash cans and stuff, but you're moving on in a healthy way and it's beautiful. All right, so let's jump into those readings. Hello, my vivacious Virgos. How are you doing, big baby? I hope you are doing super fantabulous. We're going to jump into your read. So we have the wheel coming in. We got, you know, good things on the horizon, new things coming on the forefront. We're ready to take control, ready to move forward. However, we have the eight of arrows coming in as we start this month off with the eight of arrows. For me, this is a lot of miscommunication, carrying a chip on your shoulder, really like carrying a lot of baggage, right? And the Eight of Swords or the Eight of Arrows is also significantly tied to that of a soulmate, okay? Whether it be a friendship, a lover, or whatever, okay? This is tied to that. Anyways, that energy is bringing in some conflict for you with the Five of Wands. And Virgo, I feel like it could even be a family member, but there's, there's a lot of conflict within you. The Five of Wands is like, look, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do, boo. 
All right, remember you got hawk energy. All right, haka. All right, now Princess of Disc is coming in. This is you. This is all your energy, and you're going to protect yourself. You're going to protect yourself, and you're going to move forward. You're also focused on your goals. I also see you really moving away from the energy that's tying you down to who you are no longer. Like, I feel like there's like an identity shift for you. I know that makes no sense, but that's what I'm feeling. I feel like you've changed your identity. You want to be on your own. You like being on your own, and you like making these decisions. Not that you don't want to be in a relationship, but you like to do things on your own. The wheel comes in for you. This beautiful, beautiful wheel. I'm finally glad I can breathe. <laughs> but there's a storm coming now. That's a double 10. So I'm going to say pay attention at work, okay? Pay lots of attention at work. There could be some shenanigans on the horizon there could be something going on that you need to pay attention to all right but this is also telling you that don't worry that the wheel like that the fates got you you're going to be moving and grooving and things are going to be going in the right direction that even if things do fall apart the universe has got your back all right so that's some beautiful energy coming in for you let's get a little bit more on that situation on that double 10 look five of wands i do feel like there might be some conflict around a work situation um maybe even something that's coming to an end because that double five of wands is telling me, like, pay lots of attention to the fifth and the tenth, okay? And a lot of attention to, look, when I look at this card, there's, like, two girls with masks. One not showing her stuff, and the other two don't have masks. And I feel like everyone's trying to get their point across. They're trying to make something, but they can't make it great because they're not communicating. So communication is key as you're moving forward. All right, let's do a pick a card for this eight of arrows. What's going on here? Why are we carrying such a chip on our shoulder, friend? What's going on? My beautiful Virgos. I don't know. I've been loving me some Virgos. Okay, Virgo, let's see. Card number one or card number two? If you pick card number one, you have the doors to personal healing available for you. Some of y'all are walking away from a situation and you're like, look, I'm ready for something different. And I'm ready to heal. I'm ready to move forward and I'm ready to feel great again. Make me great again. Pay attention to the seventh. It could be very, very important for you. I also feel like the windows of opportunity are opening up for you. Don't be afraid to take them. Go for it. I also see a dove. So there's a lot of peace coming in. And pink flowers. I don't know. Pink flowers might be important. So I have the Eight of Wands flew out. For I'm going to put those back because it was too many. The Queen of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles with the Ten of Wands over here. Okay. So what does this tell me? Two queens and a reed. And I'm just going to read them upright. But I'm going to tell you, if you're having issues at work, people are talking about you. Okay? There's some chatter in the office about you. And it may not be too nice. All right? So set them straight. In a nice way, Virgo. You know, the politically correct way that you like to formulate sentences and you make everyone feel incompetent, but you sound so graceful and beautiful when you do it. Anyways, this Eight of Wands, I feel like this is you connecting your love and your money. You're connecting your emotions and the ability to make things happen. And for some, these are two people coming together to make some great decisions, okay? You're making some business decisions, you're moving forward, you're also very fertile with that rabbit on the card. And... I feel like you're going to take an offer that could lead to a lot of money, okay? So I'm going to give you some clues on this Queen of Cups. What's going on with her blue hair? We have gentrification. We have El Tatu. And the troll. Oh, the troll being popular today. So this person might have always have their nails done. They might have a tattoo. They might always be looking on your social media. Um, it could be a Cancer Scorpio Pisces. It doesn't have to be. But this is a situation of like you're really trying to move out of this emotional state of being and get into a more foundational, getting into yourself, being more foundational. Okay, let's see here. Queen of Pentacles. We're going to whip it. Okay, we going to put that to an end. There is a gentleman. And a new beginning. But there is a snake. Some of y'all are dealing with somebody who wants to perpetrate as a friend or someone in the office that's trying to like really act like they're your friend. But you're going to get that situation under control and out the way. And you're going to move forward and handle what needs to be handled. Okay? Communication is a little bit rough though. I'm not going to lie. It's like a little choppy. So navigate. Navigate with care, my friend. Navigate with care. Card number two, you have that of the card number 16. 16, I can't talk. This is patience. You have to have patience in a situation. I feel like you want to cut everything off right now. You want to do, 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 and just focus on you. But time is of the essence here. You have plenty of time with that right in her solar plexus. Like there is time for healing, time for growing the confidence, time to move forward, okay? And it's going to be okay. 
Again, I apologize, guys. I'm still getting over bronchitis. The Seven of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune again, and justice is being served. So this Seven of Cups, I feel like you have to make a decision. I do think someone has lied to you with the 16 and the 7 right next to each other because that's a double 7. And I think you're like, okay, how do I handle this situation? What am I going to choose? And I feel like I have a lot of options, okay? So choose wisely. The fates are with you. You got the wheel twice. So I feel like good luck is on your side. And justice is right there. I also feel like karmic justice with the wheel of fortune by justice. I do feel like um, it's just destined to happen. Like it's just going to happen for you, okay? The eight of arrows wants you to know the nine of cups. Like, you have to release something in order to get what is for you. I almost want to say Jupiter really wants to bless you if you were just to, like, get out of your own way. And that Nine of Cups energy coming through is like, she's like, no, look, I'm not going to settle for this Eight of Swords energy. I'm going to wait for what's really for me. And when you make that decision, you're going to see through the lies of somebody and you're going to move forward. Okay, let's look at this um, guidance for the Seven of Cups. What will help us with the Seven of Cups? completion there's something that's over and I have seven 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 right next to each other the locket and your happiness and there's a trip too for you but this brings so much anxiety on the forefront so there's a completion you're gonna trust your heart and you're gonna do what makes you happy it doesn't mean it's going to be an easy decision, Virgo, but you're going to do what makes you happy, okay? Eh? I feel like sometimes when I say that, people are like, oh, it's going to be easy. I don't feel this one's going to be easy, okay? I feel like this is going to be a very difficult decision for you. But in order for you to get your nine of cups and to be sitting in this milk and honey and this great energy and this flow and this free for all and feeling so good and your dreams and everything coming to the forefront, it's time for you to make decisions, to put yourself first. I always think about the blocks and the obstacles being removed by Ganesh, like this elephant energy here. And then the milk and the honey is just like blessings upon blessings. And the rainbow is just believing that good things are coming. 51 comes down to a six. You were promised good things. You need to pay attention to that. I also feel like honey is going to be really good when you're doing your money manifesting. Put, put honey on your candle, on your green candle, and then your money herbs so that the money will stick to you and the blessings will stick to you as you move forward. All right. Let's see. Why do we have conflict? Virgo, what's going on? What's this conflict about? The Two of Cups. The Seven of Pentacles. With the Two of Wands. 272. And we cutting something off. Cow, 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 cow. Okay? So... We are in conflict about a partnership that we do not see growing anymore and we need to move forward. Whether this partnership is in love, friendship, relationship, whatever it is, it's like, no, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling this and I need to make a choice. And I feel like the two of wands is coming through and it's telling you like, what is the best decision for you? I don't know why this seven of pentacles in this deck doesn't make me feel like we're growing. It makes me feel like we're, we're stuck. It says, stuff is going down with your job. Reevaluate and change your perspective or effing quit. I'm never going to tell you to quit, boo, because I ain't going to tell you to hurt your pockets, okay? Holiday seasons, holidays. Okay, make it through the holidays. <laughs> but I feel like there's a situation. There could be someone at work who's say, claiming they're your friend or whatever. I just... Virgo, there's a major decision that needs to be made, okay? We're at the two of wands. We have to make a decision. We're in conflict with ourselves about a partnership, a lot of miscommunication, okay? Something that's over. We got the grave. We got travel. And we need 838, okay? Because 35 comes to an 8. And we have a crossroads. Meet me at the crossroads. I'm just playing. <laughs> so you won't be lonely. I'm sorry, I can't see. I can't do nothing. I got sinus pressure. Anyways, 838. I don't know what that means. That might be important for you. Write it down, all right? <laughs> Tell me what it means to you. But I feel like you're moving on to something more stable. You're leaving something that's over. Moving on with the ship, with the anchor, to be more stable. There's some. It, there, this is just not for you. And so here you are. You're going to plant the seeds for greatness, and you're going to move forward. What does the Princess of Dis suggest? Page of Wands. Okay, we got the Page of Wands. Come through. Okay, come through. Come through, Page of Wands. Four of Swords. 
I would say, ay Dios mío. <laughs> Two of swords, we have to cut it off. We're cutting it off and it is the right decision to cut it off. <coughs> so I know people think that the lovers only signifies love. But for me, that is like they're going to the guides. They're going to guides. They're going to their angels. They're going to God. They're going to their higher self to make a decision. And the decision is to cut something off. So we want to start fresh, but we got to heal and we got to cut it off by the new moon in Capricorn, okay? Which is new moon in Capricorn. What day is that? December 23rd. I'm just putting a date on it, okay? Because, you know, like manifestation is real friend, okay? But I'm just saying the 23rd could be kind of important to kind of set some intentions on how you want the rest of this year to be. I do feel like whether this is with work, a partnership, love, the Four of Swords is really about healing. She's got her hand on her stomach. There's some of y'all are having a lot of um, stomach issues, um, solar plexus issues, confidence issues, and both of them have their eyes covered. It's like you don't want to see what's in front of you. So trust your intuition, but your intuition is in your tum-tum, -tum, and your tum-tum is all set off. And so you need to start taking care of that so you can learn to cut things off that need to be cut off. Let's look at that Two of Swords. Give us guidance on this. Two of Swords. What's the energy? The lilies. The gentleman. And the owls. With the lady. Okay, I feel like for some of y'all are cutting off a sexual relationship. This isn't for everybody, okay? Some of y'all are cutting off a sexual relationship that's going to bring a lot of gossip, okay? December 28th and December 30th could be very important for you as you're making these decisions and you're moving forward. Almost like this person wants to resurface. I think you're done with this situation. But I also get a situation where someone wants to offer like the olive branch and say, I'm so sorry that this happened this way, but you're over it. You've made your choice and you're moving on. The 27th here, okay? The 27th. The number 27 comes to a nine. You're done. You're, you're done exchanging your gifts. You're done exchanging your time, whether this is with work or with love. You're not going to exchange your energy with this situation anymore. You're done. Look, the treasure island. You're going to take your goodies. Yeah, your goodies. Your goodies. You're going to take your goodies. And you're going to hit the road, Jack. And you're going to say, you know what? You're going to miss me. All right. And it's another nine. There's something that is completely over for you, Virgo. You are the damn dirty treasure. You are treasure motherfucking island, boo. OK. And you're releasing this energy. <coughs> I feel like it's a very strong energy. It's something you've been very tied to. But you're moving on and you're moving forward. I'm going to go to the rebel deck one last time. One last time, just for giggles. You equals tight. Loosen the F up, control freak. Okay, stop trying to control the situation, Virgo. Release, relate, okay? New love, new everything, new year, okay? We're ready to move on. There is something going on at work, so do pay attention to that. Love yourself. You know, that's like, when I hear that, sometimes I get really mad. Like, do you love yourself? And I'm like, yeah? And then I start thinking about, do I? Do I love myself? Like, what does that really look like? How does that look? You know, like, you've always been, I've always been raised that you put everybody else first before you. And now I'm trying to relearn that. And I'm trying to teach myself that I have to put myself first. And then I feel guilty for that. And so redefine what loving yourself looks like to you. Live your life to the fullest. And correct your mistakes. And trust the divine plan. You have some really good things coming in for you as you look forward to this, this year coming to a close. I feel you've learned a lot of lessons. There's a lot about things changing. Pay attention to stuff at work. Pay attention to who you share your energy with. Do not share personal information with anyone at your job right now because they're two-faced. Um, pay attention to the 6th, the 7th, the 11th, the 16th. The 27th, 28th, 30th, and definitely the 23rd because that's when you're going to set your intentions to release this energy that's no longer for you. All right? So let's look at your finances, Virgo. Let's see what's going on. Virgo, what's your energy? Of course, of course, of course, it would fall. Okay, three of staffs. <coughs> Five of Swords. I'm telling you, there's a discussion at work going on. You need to make sure that you're on the up and up. Do your paperwork. The Chariot. 
Give me one more. Queen of Pentacles. That's you. That's you send with your coin, baby. That's you. Invest, okay? Invest in yourself. I do believe there's a meeting. There's someone who wants you to beg for something. Some of y'all are going to be leaving a job. Some of y'all are going to be leaving a situation. Some of y'all want to leave a financial agreement with somebody that you've had. I want to pull an extra card on the charioteer. Six of staffs. You're moving on. Definitely moving on. This is a major victory for you because the chariot and the six of staffs is victory, okay? It's movement. Some of y'all want to save more for travel. That's been coming up for a lot of people, too. You need to start doing that now, okay? There is a contract. <laughs> There's a contract coming into play, whether this is with work, with housing, whatever. Do not beg. You're better off moving on. Know your worth, all right? Let's look at love. What can Virgo expect in love for the month of... December, Six of Pentacles. You know, every time I see the Six of Pentacles, I get like a weird vibe with it. And I'm like, mm, I don't know how I feel about that one, you know? Knight of Cups. We want a Mr. Hey, Big Spender. Page of Cups. Okay, so at the heart of your read is the Knight of Cups. We're really looking for a romantic situation. But, you know, crowning us is the Page of Cups. It's like a playful energy. We're looking to have more fun. We want love, okay? We're wanting the lovers, and we know that it's going to take some work. And some of y'all could be meeting somebody through work, okay? Overall energy, the Ace of Pentacles. So, Six of Pentacles into the Knight of Cups. This, okay, this is where you're at right now, okay? You're in a relationship where you're probably giving more than what you should or vice versa or whatever. If you're in a happy relationship, you guys are very nice to each other, okay? If not, I feel like someone is taking a lot, okay? The Knight of Cups is like, let's bring romance back. Let's start back fresh. Let's get back to the lovers and let's work on it, okay? And like I said earlier, some of y'all are meeting someone through work. Six of Pentacles wants you to know the Emperor. We want something strategic. We want something that's going to work. We want to be in control. Like, does that shock you, Virgo? You want to be in control? Does it shock me? Knight of Cups with the Eight of Wands. Can we talk about it? You need a mental stimulation. Virgo, you need people that can hold a damn dirty conversation. Like, um, can you, can we talk? Like, uh, am I going to be entertained? This is something about really enjoying your time with this individual. The Page of Cups is like, can we heal this relationship? Can we heal? Can we start fresh? Okay. Can we make this work? The Lovers wants you to know... Look, the Knight of Cups. I do think some of y'all have a Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy coming in, Sun, Moon, or Rising, maybe even in their Venus. But this energy is coming in, and they're looking for you, boo. Because she's like, who, who are you looking for? And he's like, girl, I am here for you, okay? You. I know what I want. I feel like this individual knows what they want. Three of Pentacles is telling you the Ten of Cups. Work on your fulfillment. Work on what makes you happy. And you see that man running? I feel like you're like, look, if you don't want to live your life and be fulfilled and like live life to the fullest with me, shabai. Okay? You're like, you want to go run down the streets and be that way? Go. Go do that. Because as for me, I'm going to turn up right here. Okay? You end with the Ace of Pentacles with the devil dick. Okay? With the devil. So. <laughs> That was a very turn of events, right? In order for us to build, in order for us to build something new, we have to release energies that have us tied to something that is no longer beneficial. So if you're in a relationship and something isn't working, it is time to sit down and have that heart-to-heart -heart conversation and talk about what can work, what needs to happen for it to work. Now, if you're not in a relationship and you're with a side piece or something else, a situation ship, as they say, it's time to release that and focus on the energy that wants to come towards you. Instead of you always making time for someone, this is coming towards you. And it comes with the lover's energy. It comes with a fresh energy. Okay. Oracle reads, we're definitely working on our chakra, our heart chakra. We got Archangel Raphael coming in. Lots of heart chakra energy. We're trying to find balance. There is some hostile energy, especially with this devil energy. Maybe you're dealing with a Capricorn. I don't know. But we're walking away from something. And we're going to get rooted and grounded with our root chakra. And we're going to tear. We're going to tear. We're going to cut our cords of attachment. And we're going to love ourselves. We're going to put ourselves first. 
and we're going to look for other possibilities, other windows of opportunity to open. Virgo, this is one of those months where you're kind of like seeing things in the bigger picture. There's a lot of shakeups this month for you, but revelations are coming to the forefront and you're starting to see things for what they are. The wheel coming in twice for you this month is actually telling you like everything that's falling apart was meant to fall apart because you're meant to move on to something better. There's something very beautiful for you. And I do believe some of y'all are cutting off either a Capricorn, a Taurus, or a Aries. Maybe Aquarius. You're cutting them off and you're moving forward because you know what you want and you know where you want to be. And in order for you to get there, it's like, and it doesn't even have to be in love. It could even be in a friendship, partnership, whatever. You're cutting it off and you're focusing on your healing this month and you're focusing on where you want to be in 2023. So that's what I have for you, love bug. If you don't follow me on Instagram, baby, you need to go on over to the gram and follow me so we can have some fun. All right. Because I'll probably be going live there all month long. And if you're interested in a read, hit me up on my link tree and let's hang out. Take care.